A man died after developing sepsis when his fresh tattoo wound became infected from swimming in the sea. The 31-year-old, who is identified only as a Latino man living in Texas, ignored the advice given to those with new inkings that they should wait for two weeks before venturing into pools or oceans as it can lead to bacterial infection. Instead, he decided to venture into the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, just five days after obtaining a large religious tattoo showing hands in prayer with the words, Jesus is my life, on his right leg. The day after he went swimming, he developed a fever, chills, and a red rash close to his tattoo. His condition continued to worsen over the next two days before he was eventually admitted to Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas. Within a few hours after he was admitted, his condition got worse rapidly. There are darkening skin changes, more bruising, more discoloration, called bula, or mounds of fluid that were starting to collect in his legs. He tested positive for Vibrio vulnificus, a bacterium found in coastal ocean water that causes vibriosis infection. Doctors were forced to place him on a life support machine as his organs began to fail. Vibrio vulnificus is an extremely virulent bacteria that can cause a severe infection. It is contracted through eating raw shellfish and swimming with an open wound, as well as stings from stingrays. This disease comes with many symptoms including vomiting, intense diarrhea, blistering dermatitis, and severe abdominal pain. To make matters worse, Vibrio vulnificus weakens the immune system, affecting both the liver and bloodstream and ultimately killing those who do not seek proper treatment. The man entered into septic shock, triggered when an infection sparks a violent immune response in which the body attacks its own organs. He was kept sedated for weeks before dying of septic shock, about two months after he was first admitted to the hospital. A teenager who went for a swim at a Melbourne beach and emerged with his feet covered in blood has stumped marine experts. Sam Canizay's legs felt sore after playing a game of football on Saturday night, so he decided to soak them at the beach to soothe his aching muscles. About 30 minutes later, the 16-year-old walked out of the water with his feet and ankles covered in what looked like hundreds of little pinholes that were bleeding profusely. Upon returning home, his parents promptly took him to the hospital. Doctors attempted to stem the flow of blood, but it continued to run from the many pinhole-sized bites on Sam's feet and legs. Canizay's father, Jared Canizay, said hospital staff had no idea what kind of creature could have caused the injuries. Investigating on his own, he put on two wetsuits, returned to where his son had soaked his feet, and used some raw meat to lure the unknown pests into a pool net. He collected thousands of the mites, each about two millimeters long. Later, he uploaded a video to YouTube of what he believes is the culprit feasting on chunks of raw meat he provided. The mysterious creatures suck the blood out of the bits of meat and remain attached to the flesh of the meat. Marine biologists examined a sample and said they were a type of scavenging crustacean, technically known as the Lysianacidae amphipods. It's believed that the creatures may disperse an anticoagulant when they bite, which would explain why it was so hard to stop the bleeding. A week after swimming on a family vacation, a four-year-old boy from Texas took his last breath. The suspected cause of death is dry drowning, a rare medical condition. Frankie Delgado was playing in knee-deep water during a Memorial Day weekend trip to Texas City Dyke when a wave from a distant ship knocked him over and his head went under. A family friend picked him up and Frankie said he was okay. The next night, Frankie began to vomit and have diarrhea. His parents had taken him to the hospital and were told it was a stomach bug, so they decided to treat him at home. 
The problems continued that week. Frankie woke one night complaining of shoulder pain and went back to sleep, only to wake up in serious pain hours later. Frankie was rushed to the hospital, but after medical staff spent over an hour trying to resuscitate him, he was pronounced dead. They found water in his lungs and around his heart and told his parents that he died of dry drowning. Dry drowning happens when someone breathes water in. The water never reaches the lungs, but it causes the vocal cords to spasm and tighten, eventually shutting down the airway. When this happens, the body's response is to send fluid to the lungs to try to open up the vocal cords. But this can lead to excess fluid in the lungs, a condition called pulmonary edema. Another similar condition called secondary drowning happens when water gets into the lungs and then starts to build up over time. In this case, water dilutes or washes out of the lung surfactant, a slippery substance that needs to prevent lung sacs from sticking together and collapsing. Without the surfactant, the lung sacs start to stick together and the body can't properly exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen. This causes the same shock response as dry drowning, the body sending fluid to the lungs, resulting in pulmonary edema. Symptoms of dry drowning usually happen immediately, while secondary drowning has a later onset, between 1 to 24 hours. Both cause the same symptoms, which include persistent coughing, shortness of breath, chest pain, lethargy, fever, and an unusual mood change. The vomiting that Frankie experienced could have been caused by either irritation from the water or a bacterial infection. In August 2015, Kelsey McLean celebrated her 24th birthday at Fisher's Landing, a resort along the Colorado River just hours away from her home in El Cajon, California. She spent most of her 24th birthday enjoying activities in the fresh water and felt fine when she came home. But on August 13, 2015, McLean developed a headache and couldn't turn her head without excruciating pain. She went to Sharp Grossmont Hospital in La Mesa the following day, suffering from symptoms including a fever, vomiting, and worsening headache. She came back to the hospital on August 15th. Doctors first thought she had bacterial meningitis. They administered multiple antibiotics but failed, and McLean's condition worsened. She woke up the next morning unable to speak or move her head. After rounds of treatment, McLean had a grand mal seizure. When nurses checked her eyes, they were fully dilated and she was pronounced brain dead. Kelsey McLean's death was pronounced at 6.30 p.m. on August 17th, eight days after her 24th birthday. Doctors were baffled. They sent McLean's spinal fluid to a lab at UC San Diego and discovered Negleria fallery, a brain-eating amoeba found in freshwater rivers, hot springs, lakes, and even untreated swimming pools. Negleria fallery, commonly referred to as the brain-eating amoeba, can cause a rare and devastating infection of the brain called primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, PAM. It usually infects people when contaminated water enters the body through the nose. Once the amoeba enters the nose, it travels to the brain where it causes PAM, which is usually fatal. Scuba diving is one of the most popular recreational water sports in the world. Fantastic coral reefs, eerie shipwrecks, and incredible marine life are major attractions for many beachgoers. But it's important to remember the dangers of scuba diving, as some are potentially life-threatening. Alejandro Ramos Martinez, a seafood diver from Pisco, Peru, recently made international headlines after a terrible accident left him looking like a human balloon. He apparently rose from a depth of 30 meters too fast which caused the nitrogen in his blood to form giant bubbles that adhered to his muscles, leaving him looking deformed. Martinez's unusual case was featured on Peruvian TV show Cuatro Poder, where doctors were left stunned by the horrifying effects of the nitrogen pods on the man's physical appearance. 
Decompression sickness, also known as the bends, causes nitrogen to come out of the solution and form bubbles in the blood and tissues. In mild cases, symptoms include unusual fatigue, dizziness, nausea, and joint pain. But in rare cases, it can also cause paralysis or even death. The deforming effects it has had on this Peruvian diver are believed to be unique. Alejandro Ramos Martinez suffered his diving accident four years ago, but doctors are still looking for ways to get the nitrogen bubbles out of his body. Because these gas sacs are apparently attached to the man's flesh, they cannot be removed surgically. So the best solution they've come up with so far has been administering oxygen in a pressurized chamber. They have so far been able to eliminate about 30% of the enormous nitrogen bubbles and estimate Martinez will require at least another 100 sessions in the hyperbaric chamber. The bizarre reaction to the rapid ascent not only left him looking like a walking balloon, but apparently also added an extra 30 kilo to his frame. The nitrogen bubbles apparently cause Martinez excruciating pain, which he can only live with thanks to painkillers as well as hypertension. His deformed frame has recently resulted in a serious hip injury, which doctors say will require a prosthesis. Digging a hole on the beach is something many of us will remember doing as a child or even as an adult. But now, emergency services are warning beachgoers that these seemingly innocent pits could become potential death traps. In 2005, three-year-old Abby Livingstone Nurse died after falling into a hole dug under the sand at the high tide mark at Upper Towns Beach in Hale, Cornwall. Lifeguards rushed to help the little girl who had become trapped in the five feet deep pit after playing with her five-year-old brother on the beach. Her stepfather managed to pull her brother free, but despite the combined efforts of lifeguards, coast guards, and firefighters, Abby could not be reached in time. She died of asphyxiation and her death was ruled an accident. In a similar case in 2014, Isabel Grace Franks, 9, was digging a large pit at an Oregon beach in Lincoln City, America when it caved in and suffocated her to death. On 2017, 30-year-old Ashley O'Connor suffocated to death after falling into a large hole on the beach. She was taking a stroll on the beach at around 2 o'clock in the morning when she either fell or sat in a hole dug by another vacationer. The sand then collapsed, burying her alive. A few hours later, a beachgoer found her body submerged in the sand, with only a hand showing. A prominent Australian businessman has plunged to his death while parasailing in Thailand with his wife capturing footage of the horrifying fall from the beach below. Footage of the incident showed 71-year-old Roger John Hussey smiled for his wife, who filmed him as he stood on Kata Beach in Phuket and prepared to take part in the water sports activity on July 12, 2017.
but just moments after being lifted up into the air, he fell 40 meters into the shallows below as his wife and dozens of horrified beachgoers watched on. He was pulled to shore by beachgoers who said he had problems breathing. Emergency services rushed Roger Husi to the nearby Patong Hospital but was pronounced dead a short time later. The Perth-based businessman and his Thai-born wife, Budzabong Thongsenka, were reportedly just 12 days into their dream holiday. According to local media, parasailing operator told police Roger Husi accidentally pulled on a hook that unstrapped his harness after confusing the ropes on his parasail. Both staff members, Sailor Rungro Rakship, 38, and Boat Captain Montian Chendeng, 45, were both arrested and charged with recklessness leading to death. This is what six-year-old Bella is known for, her smile. You'd never guess it's the same little girl in this picture. On June 2016, six-year-old Bella Sullivan went swimming together with her mother, Nicole Sullivan, at Huntington Park Beach. Bella had a small scratch on her face when she went swimming. Later, she began to develop redness and swelling in her face that eventually progressed into a painful, itchy infection. As time went on, the condition only worsened, and by Tuesday, Bella was so swollen she could not even open her eyes. Her mother said, Tuesday morning, she woke up and both her eyes were completely closed shut, and she was completely swollen, her face, her neck, her arms also. Sullivan rushed her daughter to the doctor, who diagnosed the condition as severe case of impetigo. It's a bacterial infection that the doctor believes Bella developed after the water got into her tiny scratch. Impetigo is a highly contagious but temporary skin infection that causes red sores on the face, especially around the mouth. The sores rupture, ooze for a few days, then form a yellow-brown crust. It is rarely serious and usually resolves on its own within a couple of weeks. However, in Bella's case, it was much more severe. The condition could lead to serious life-threatening infection, such as bacteremia or sepsis. Bella's mom advises other parents to hold off on going to the beach if they notice their child has any cuts or other type of open wound. <laughs>